what, what, what is it that is worrying is what, what, what worrying in, 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 in our football? What makes us to be, you know, obsessed mm. in terms of the given opportunity and uh, one thing that was happening at that time also was I used to be a ball boy every time all on the stadium in these games. I will go there early uh, so that I can see the players come in. I'll ask you to carry the bag, you know, walk with them. When they get to the changing room and then I give them the bag. And you guys, you worried about Sanders. You're not worried, worried about yourself. If you can develop 10 players, there's no way Sanders would buy all 10 players. There's no way. They can't. There's no way they would do that. Yeah. So you guys, it means you lost. We just want to see. We saw your videos. We saw what is it that you can do. Uh, in the videos, but now we want to see your physical. Then, okay, fine. Then I dressed, I went to the field. After the training, they said, Dear Baba, we're signing you. Just like that. Look, after, first day of trials, so. though. First trial, first. <laughs> I remember <laughs> in the game, there were people that need to, to carry me. But now, uh, yes, you know, my father, my brother, it's okay, but. Why you, you know, out of, out of, thank you, out of all the people, but why you, you know, and. Did you see that coming for Sundowns in your time there? Did you see that this was a team that was, was creating something special? Yeah. Because let's be honest, Sundowns has become something special in the past few years. All is welcome to Onside ZA, brought to you by Betway. Get way more in a very special interview today. Uh, Orlando Pirates, all-time record goal scorer, Bafana Bafana star champion uh, <laughs> of the Premiership, yeah. Mr. Tor Villakazi. Welcome. No, thanks, my brother, and thanks for you guys to inviting me. And yeah, hope uh, all of us are going to have fun. We will. Yeah, definitely. Also joining us on the show is everybody's favorite, Tippy Darling. Hi, Welcome. Darling. <laughs> um, so, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. I mentioned in the intro for you, Orlando Pirates, all-time record goal scorer, a record that stands to this day. Why do you think that your record still stands? What do you attribute to that to? I mean, of course, it's still a phenomenal goal scoring return for the time that you spent there. But nobody has since taken it is it failings on their side is it just too difficult to get to those 52 <laughs> goals uh, firstly i would like to 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 thank god um you know for giving me the talent and uh, my parents uh, may their soul rest in peace and the chairman dr ivan Koza, because um if he didn't give me that opportunity to come and play for his team i doubt that uh, we'll be sitting here and, and talk about the, the record that I've, I've, I've got um, for his team. And yeah, uh, look, I think times are, are different, you know, and uh, players that are playing that different because I, when I grew up, I, I used to watch all of the Pirates, Kids Achieve, Sanders, and all other teams. And the only person that um, always heard about him, and but... I was young, I didn't see him playing live. I just saw the videos was uh, Chomosono. And they said he scored a lot of goals, you know, more than a thousand goals. And, you know, to play for a big team like Orlando Pirates and score those goals, uh, it's amazing. And here I am, played for Orlando Pirates, you know, uh, highest top goal scorer and in, the, in this era of, of PSL. And, um, uh it's 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 i would say i'm honored you mm. know uh, it's not something that you can wake up and be in that position it takes a lot and a lot of people they contributed to be uh, to be where i am in terms of um the old time to go scorer and as i said the chairman the coaches uh, um, teammates uh, the supporters you know everyone because they were they were encouraging me 
you know, keep on pushing me. And yeah, it, it, it plays, they played a huge role in, in, in for me to be a, a top scorer today. I think that if you look at the league setup, yeah. In the past few years, bar the last two, I'd say, including yeah. this season and last season, yeah. the Betway Premiership, formerly then uh, the pre- Premiership, the PSL, yeah. is sort of light on goals compared to maybe some top European leagues, etc. You see a lot of nil nils, one nils, etc. We it's not the highest goal scoring league in world football. I think we're starting to see a change in that. I think you're starting to see more goals flow in, more attacking football. Did it become a bit stagnant from a strat- from a technical standpoint? Did, did managers try and close up the midfield, perhaps like slow up play a little bit? Or would you say that that could be part of it? Look, I... <sighs> it, it... When, when, when I watch European football and look at our, our, our league, um, I'm not trying to compare, mm. but I will compare in terms of why, can, why they can score more than 20 goals. Why can't we? Mm. And you look at how they play, you look at the individual players, what they can do as a group, as a team. Why is it so difficult for us? Uh, are, we, are we worried about conceding? Or are we worried about how can you score? What, what, what is it that is worrying us? What, what, what worrying in, 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 in our football? What makes us to be, you know, obsessed mm. in terms of uh, 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 the game itself? Because when you watch Barcelona, they score three four goals. Yeah, it's not that no one no one knows how Barcelona they play. Everyone knows, but Barcelona will go in and play the way they play, they'll score. Why can't Paris do that? Yeah. Why just can't they do that? Why should just be arrows? Why can't they do that? But what I've realized is that when they see that those teams, they're good at attacking, instead of them thinking of saying, okay, fine, they're good at attacking. But can't you find those loopholes in, 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 in their team when they attack? Or when they defend, there's always something in the team. And I, I always emphasize where I work to say the game. One thing I love the most about the game is that it gives you questions. You must come with answers mm-hmm. if we are in that game. And uh, now our coaches, our coaches, there are few that they can see those questions and come up with answers. Some, they fail. And that's why you'll see our game, we're not improving, we can't score goals, because we are the defending. And uh, uh, you look at the type of football that we're playing, is not interesting now. We complain that we don't see supporters coming to the game. But supporters, they want to see the skill. They want to see goals. But if I'm going to, I'm going to defend the, the whole 45 minutes, and when, when you defend, when you get a ball, what are you doing with the ball? Mm. So these are the things that it's worrying me in our football to say our coaches, uh, when they plan during the week, what are they planning about? Because when we see on, on, on weekend, you see a team that is defending the whole game. So he's saying to me, he was planning to defend the whole week. Something is wrong. Mm. Uh, I was saying, you don't have quality players. That can't be true, right? Or I would like you with coaching. Something needs to be done somewhere. Yeah. So I think this season we've seen more goals banged in um, in recent weeks. And I think last season yeah. there was an improvement in goals as well. Yes. So perhaps we'll see a more enterprising league now with the Betway Premiership. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think tactically, if you look at the modern game tactically, it's all about the overload, right? Is you either overload in defense, yeah. you always want the overload in every sort of position. So if the, op- if the opposition team is attacking, yeah. you want to have the overload on defense. Um, when you're attacking, you want to be able to overload their defense. And I think that's why you saw that dominance of a midfield, right? It's just sort of overload the midfield, make sure you're packed so that you've got the opportunity to overload in those positions. But 
you need to be more enterprising than that if you really want to go on and succeed and, in this and score game, goals. In this game, I would say I'm lucky. Why I'm saying I'm lucky is because I played the game. Uh, I went to two coaching courses with a KFB license. I'm a qualified coach. So whatever that I'm talking about, it's not that I didn't experience it. I did experience it. So I know exactly. Uh, you overload. There's two ways of, of this overload. And uh, people, they need to understand. Why are you overloading? That's number one. Are you overloading based on you want the superior number in attack or you overloading because you want the superior number in defense? What is that is going to work for you? What are you looking for when you overload? When you overload at the back because you want to play transition or you overload forward because you know that you don't have a good defense so that when you've got more numbers in attack, you minimize the numbers of opponents in your half. you have. You check those things. So it's, it's, it's something that when I look at in our league, I'm like, okay, you guys are overloading on the left side. What, why are you overloading on the left side? Are you, are, you, are you overloading, trying to create something out of that overloading? Or you're overloading based on closing down? And when you close down on that right, right side, what's happening on the left? Mm. So uh, uh, for me, I, I look at the whole scenario of the game to say, overloading, for me, I'll overload based on I want the superior because I saw that on that side, they're weaker. Right. Then I overload. Right. And, and shift everyone. When I overload, automatically for me, I know everyone will move that side. Then when they move, I don't even think twice. One, two, three. Then I switch to the left. That's where I would get a goal. That's how you need to do it. Tippy darling. Okay, so I just want us to go back um, when you started off. Yeah. And I think, you know, we know you as um, an Orlando Pirates um, player first. And then there's other teams such as Mamluri Sundowns, yeah. Black Aces, yeah. Black Leopards and the like. Yes. But I don't think we talk enough about the times you got rejected before you started Orlando Pirates. I mean, um, mm -hmm. Verts rejected you. Yeah. I think Coach Farouk at the time also didn't give you a chance when you were playing, when you um, trained for Chiefs. Oh, yes. Do you remember those days? And also, yeah. when you look at yourself now as a coach, in retrospect, would you do you understand why you were not given those opportunities? Uh, look, it's it's as I'm a coach today. It, it it all depends on how I feel about you, what I see in mm. you, and then I take you. Because um, if I will be mad at Coach Farouk, I mean. <laughs> I'll be just going to waste my time. True. Because uh, there's, there's this say of saying when the other door closes, the other one opens. So it didn't happen at Chiefs. It didn't happen at the Rev Rovers. It didn't happen at Swallows. <gasps> Rovers was owned by um, Twala, right? Silo yeah. Silo, Silo Chico Twala. Chico Twala. Yes, 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 yes. He was, he wanted me there. Yes, yes, he wanted yes. Me there. Mm. So Rev Rovers, Swallows, uh, the only team that nearly, nearly, it was a matter of hours, mm -hmm. was Mamelo Sundowns. Sundowns. Tell me that Sundowns. story, please. Uh, Sundowns, you know, uh, after all the rejections from these other teams, and then uh, Computer Lamola, they used to play for, for Chiefs, and also Prasem, uh, he stays in the Val. They took me to Mamelo Sundowns. Uh, for trials, when I got there, there was the late coach, um, Dimitri. Dimitri, yeah, may mm -hmm. so rest in peace. And also, Coach Peter Musman mm -hmm. was also there. So, I play, uh, trained with the development side. Then, from there, Coach Ted wanted me on the senior team. Then, I trained with the senior team. I remember on that week, uh, it was on Wednesday, it was on Wednesday. And then I was at school, Palashos came lunchtime. Uh, before that, yeah, on Tuesday we were training at Sundowns. And then they said to me, Friday, you must come and sign a contract. Mm. I'm so, so excited. I mean, signing a professional contract. Ah, looking forward for that. And then 
Come Wednesday, lunchtime, Palacios came. Hey, boy, how are you? Good. Hey, look, uh, the chairman wants to see you. Chairman? Yeah. Who's the chairman? Uh, Dr. Ivan Court. <laughs> <laughs> so now, like, because we all know him. You know, mm. What now? No, he wants you to come and pray for parent. I said, are you serious, prof? Yes, wants you. Like, so he's going to come. I'm going to come with him around uh, four o'clock at your house so that you can meet your parents. Deep okay. proof. Deep proof, yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then when I go home, after school, then I had to run home like as fast as I can. And I go home and then I told my father, may his soul rest in peace. Mm-hmm. I said, Taima, hey, uh, Palacios came lunchtime and then he said, uh, the chairman did I even cause I was me to come and pray for Come here. Are you serious? I said, well, Palashus, that's, that's what he said. So we just going to wait and see. Then uh, around about half past three, then kids, they came inside the house and said, hey, somebody wants you outside. Wants me outside. Yeah. Said, hey. Then when I go outside, then I saw Palashus and now the is here. Then I went back. I tell my father, Eddie, he's here. Serious, yeah, he's here. Okay, no, it's fine. They say what he says. And then came in and then he spoke to my father. Asked my father. Um, here, I hear that your son, he's going to sign for Sundowns. Uh, Sundowns is a team from Victoria. And I'm the owner of Orlando Pirates. I just stay here down the road. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just stay More here. More next door. Move. Yeah, just down the road, I stay here. And I believe that um, I'm not going to allow uh, a talent from Soweto, where I'm a chairman of a team from Soweto, and then I allow this boy to go and play a team of uh, from Pretoria. So I'm here, I'm asking, and can I have your son come and play for me? Then I, and my father said, okay, what are you saying? I said, I just want to play football. Yeah. That's all I want. And... Uh, the rest, uh, the rest, uh, you, you guys will see. I just want to play. But weren't you a Kaza Chief supporter when you were growing up? Uh, can I have a sip? Have yeah. A sip? <laughs> Careful there. <laughs> because you played cricket at some point also. Yeah. That's where you started. Oof. You know, when you talk about that, you... I just had goosebumps now. Because... Uh, I didn't like football. I was playing mm. football like after school when we play challenge, one ball, two ball. Uh, and then from there, I was a good bowler in cricket. And it happens one day where uh, at school, our team from school, like they were having a game. So one of the players didn't come. Then the, one of the teachers said, hey, where are these boys that they normally play here after school here? We need one of them to come in. And they said, no, this one, this one, this one. This one. I was like, no, no. They said, you must go in, you must go in. Then I dressed up, I went in. After that game, they said to me, forget about cricket. Forget, forget about cricket. I said, there's no way I love cricket. I would, I would rather play both of them. They said, look, forget about cricket. Just go and focus here. Here you've got it. Mm-hmm. Then I've played cricket and soccer. So I was like, ah, cricket. You go there by seven in the morning. You come back at six. The whole day. day. Ah, I was like, no, 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 no. Then I started to join another team uh, in zone two, the same in Deep Loof. Uh, the team called Fulham. I played them. Uh, from there, I played for Hellenic? Parco. Uh, Deep Loof. Uh, it was Fulham, mm-hmm. the team in zone two. And then from there, I played for Parco. In zone one, in a uh, played for Triple Hellenic. Mm-hmm. Then that's when, like now, I can see where I'm going with football and play Champions League. Uh, and then I was selected by one of the teams that we must come and help. We are about three, four players from my team called Triple Hellenic. Then we played. We go to play in Spokane for a team called Two for Joy. Uh, we won the Champions Little League with that team. And then I uh, went back to my team, uh, the Prefele Nick. We played the Nike tournament where we lost in the finals. Yes, in the finals of the region. And then um, 
we played the KFC Cup with Maribane High School. Mm-hmm. Uh, we won the KFC Cup. Uh, that was 96, I think. Yes, 96. We won 96. And then 97, we went to represent South Africa. World Cup. In the World Cup, yeah. School's World Cup in Peru, where we lost in the semifinals with penalties. But we had, we had, we had a good team. We had a good team, you know. Those guys, we, some of them, they yeah, are the pass on me. They are so rest in peace. We had a good team. And then when I came back, like all of us, we came back. Then that's when a lot of people they were saying, hey, man, why don't you go there? Go to Chiefs. Go to Vates. I remember I trained also with Vates. Uh, Coach Floyd Mohale knows me. Bra George. George Mohotsi mm-hmm. used to fetch us then to prove with the with the face pass. Um yeah, that's where I started. I went there. It was not an easy journey. Yeah. Um you know, I would get home around 10 in the evening. And I remember um my father said, you know what, if you will come at this time, I think we have to stop. You know, then that's when I stopped to go to Vets. Then I went to Chiefs, they were training at Rao. That's not far from Oakland Park. From there, I went to Church Cork for Swallows. And uh, also Swallows were like, keep coming, keep coming. Then I went to Chomo Cosmos. You know, Chomo's, Chomo's thing, it's, it's, it's a funny one, you know. <laughs> it's, it's a very funny one. And I, I, I like him. I like him a lot. And um, I'm, 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 I'm privileged that, you know, I've got his number. Sometimes we, we just talk and just check on him, him. I remember when I, I got to his team, he said to me, are you playing soccer, I said, yeah. But how can you kick the ball? Because the ball is your size. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was a big in at that yeah. time. So, yeah, today I can laugh. You know, at that time I was like, but why, why is he saying this to me? And yes, I was so hurt because he didn't give me a chance because he thought like he's a young boy. And mm-hmm. yeah, but... Uh, today I just laugh about it and yeah then that was um, yeah I went to Red Rovers and uh, uh, Sundowns and Pirates and Pirates they gave me an opportunity and uh, one thing that was happening at that time also was I used to be a ball boy every time all on the stadium in these games I will go there early uh, so that I can see the players come in I'll ask her to carry the bag, you know, walk with them. When they get to the changing room and then I give them the bag and from them, I'll be a ball boy there. If in peace stadium also, even when um, they play Africa Cup of Nations when they won in uh, 96, I was a ball boy there. Palashus was a, a team manager of, of, of Bafana Bafana. Yeah, you know, I was there and seeing them carrying their bags, Abu Jerez Kosana, you know, the late John Mweti, uh, Dr. Kumalo, Temu Humlo, Paris when they're playing. And so I'll carry their bags. And so now I'm, I'm here with them, you know, and, and to train with them. Uh, I remember Charan Pasel from Kababa. Then he called me when I came in. Hey, boy, hey, can you go and fetch my kid to the local room? Look, I didn't have like worries of why now you're sending me there while we go to work together. But I enjoy that. I would go there and get their stuff, give them their stuff. We train all of us. When we're done, I'll put them together, take them to the local room. And um, when I look at those things today, you know, um, I'm like, uh, those guys, they did help me a lot because uh, that's when you learn respect, be disciplined. You know, when the elders are talking to you, you need to listen and respect that. And I I, I, I grow up and even today when I see them and I, I'm still... You call them footman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 man. Like all of them, I call them Mama, I'm a hot man because uh, for me, they've paved the way for me, you know, uh, not only for me, but a lot of us, but spe- specifically for me, they helped me a lot, you know, when I got to Pirates. Uh, Gavin Lane also was, you know, retiring. Uh, Mark Fish was also there because I remember when I came in, I was wearing number 34. 
And in that season, that was the season where Mark Fisher retires. He was wearing number five. Fish. Then the following season, then I had to get that number five. And yeah, it was, yeah, uh, you know, I still, I still have those memories, you know, and, and as we're talking now, uh, we're training at Max Park, uh, you know, so Zuma, John Wade, Jerez Kosana, he was wearing uh, number 15, uh, William Okpara. Those guys, those guys, uh, they, they, they made me who I am today. And uh, that's why I cannot stop to look back. Uh, and also see the young ones that are coming that um, if any help that you ask from me, I'm here. Prof Palacios, when he was on the podcast here, yeah. he spoke of the importance of building that culture at Orlando Pirates. And I think he was fundamental in building that culture and he focused so heavily on on the young kids coming oh. through in that system. Give us some insight into his influence on your career in those early days at Pirates especially. Uh, he obviously spotted your talent quite early on as well. And I think he he was such a big part of that family culture that we saw at Pirates and him and Dr. Ivan Koza together. Look, he, 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 he did wonders. Uh, he did wonders and he, I think he's the only coach that understands the culture, the philosophy, the way Pirates. Um, we, we, because when I got to Pirates, uh, that's when they started the the the, the academy. Uh, I remember it was October when we started, and then by December that's when they said, "No, you now you can go to the senior team now." And uh, he he worked like tirelessly. You know, he he used to push us. He used to, you know, take us, sit down with us, play the videos. Uh, 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 you know, tells you that to watch this player is playing your position. This is what I want you to do in the field of play. And, uh, you know, he spent, he invested in the game. And he, at some point, I remember we were about nine development players playing in the professional team for one of the parents. Not that nine were signed, but not playing. Like mm-hmm. in the lineup, in the lineup, but remember, I think we were playing against Sundowns, if I'm not mistaken. Nine of us from development were in that starting lineup playing. And it tells you that uh, 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 Palacios, he, he knew what he was doing. And he did his job very, very well. That's one thing that I'm, I'm, I'm worried about when we, when I look at all these other teams, especially Pirates, uh, because uh, um, um, I would say I'm who I am because of uh, all on the parents. So my worry is that uh, are we are we still going the very same route or do you, uh, did we change? Because when I look at the past five years, we don't have that quality players that we we know that from the development side of parents we normally produce. And so I'm I'm worried about that uh, in terms of. What's happening in the development? Are we, are we, are we, if it's possible, especially, you know, Palacios is there. He's, he's, uh, yes, he's, he's old, but they can still give us the knowledge. And some of us, we now we qualified as coaches. You know, it, it will be nice to, to go back and say, look, I've played for this team. I know what it takes to be in this team. I know what this team wants from players. And we, we can work in developing these players because I, I hear a lot of people crying that you no know, uh, sundowns they've got all the good players. But I always say you've got an opportunity to 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 have those players. You've got development. They said no but parents they're buying all the players. It, guys, you guys you worried about sundowns you're not worried, worried about yourself. If you can develop 10 players, there's no way sundowns would buy all 10 players. There's no way. They can't. There's no way they would do that. Yeah. So you guys, it means you lost your identity. So because of now sundowns they're buying, now you're like, no, you know what? We're not going to do anything because 
What's the point for us? Because when these boys play, Sundance is going to take, they're not going to buy 10 of them or 15 of them. So the good thing is that when Sundowns are gained, buying those players from you, you're making money. Yeah. Continue to develop. You're making money. Mm -hmm. So, but now if you're not going to continue to develop, you're not going to make money. And you so, need to you need to purchase your squad. Now you you mm. you you you'll want to do what Sanders is doing. Mm. And then now it goes back to say, let's go back way back before so played for 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 pirates. Pirates they used to have their own way of play, the type of players. Then they put the structure. This is how pirates they play. This is the type of players uh, pirates they always have in their team. So even if Sanders will come and say, we want a uh, 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 Mufu gang. But we know we've got five of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if yeah. they take, take Mufu gang, we bring the other five here. It doesn't disrupt the it style of play. It doesn't they, disrupt the identity of Orlando look, Pirates they, to lose one or two players. will always be up there mm. because of the development. Look at what, and I, 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 I said this uh, two seasons back. I said, guys, watch Stellenbosch. Hmm. They said to me, no, we know Steve Parker. We know how he plays from a, a, a tax in Pretoria. I said, that's your problem. The problem is that you now looking at the history, but you don't look at what he's doing now. Look at the work that he's doing. Look at his TTC team. Hmm. Look at his uh, uh, PSL team. He's doing very well. Look now he's playing Confederation Cup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Check how many young, you know, season in, season out, there's two, three players from DTC coming there. And then you ask yourself, but they always buy his key players. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But look at his team where he is. Yeah. He's always up there. It's not disrupting them so, so fully. Means, and every season it's two or three oh top players man. from Stelis oh, are off yeah. to so, one of the big clubs. So which, which football are we watching? Yeah. If, if, if we can see that. So it tells you that uh, it means we, 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 we well, how, how can I put it? We don't care about development or we don't want to look in terms of can we develop or what. But if we are a person that in the game, be involved in the game and wants the football to, 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 to progress, you know, and the boys also to grow in the game, you look at, what Steve Park is doing. And I said to, 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 to the guys that I work with, I said, I thought Steve Park had the game we leave him behind because of the way the football that he was playing attacks mm -hmm. uh, 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 and, and now coming to the PSL, the football will leave him behind. But when I saw him there standing in the way the type of football that they're playing, I was like, there's something that, that is cooking there. And if we're not watching. Yeah, you, you were part of a very successful spell at Pirates in, yeah. in your, as you joined the senior squad. Of course, like you said, you were in the youth development system for a very short period of time. Yeah. And uh, you then joined the senior squad. Very successful spell, especially in your early spell yeah. at Pirates. Yeah. Um, and then an opportunity arises to head off to Denmark. Yeah. And I'm very curious about that spell um, yeah. and that stint in Denmark, especially in terms of how the opportunity arises, how you end up going there and how difficult it was to, first of all, adjust culturally when you got to Denmark and the, the style of football, the general culture of the country and adapting there, um, along with how difficult it was to sort of go to the chairman and be like, look, this opportunity has come and we can go, especially with players. We've discussed this at yep. length that it, it seems like it's more difficult for players now today to leave their clubs in South African football. They all have various reasons as to why, but the opportunities don't seem to be there for players right now to go over to Europe and, and try apply their trade there. Uh, Okay, let me start here. Yeah, let me start here because this point it, it's a very crucial one, but I, 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 it will come. Look, uh, it was 
For me, it was a shock when I got a call from uh, my agent, uh, Mike McCaw, to say, hey, I must go for trials in, in, in Denmark. And at that time, it was an off-season here. And, you know, so you were not fit? I was not fit. I mean, it was off-season, you know, staying at home, not doing anything, because I know that off-season must rest, you yeah. know. So when you said, hey, you need to go for trials, I was like, trials is... But I'm unfit, you know. You need to go. They just confirm that you need to go. And then the chairman said, yes, you are going there. Oh, okay, it's fine. Then when I got there, uh, the coach said to me, look, uh, we, we, we know that it's off-season. You've been home, no training, doing any, anything. It's fine. We just want to see you. We saw your videos. We saw what is it that you can do uh, in your videos. But now we want to see you physically. Then, okay, fine. Then I dressed, I went to the field. After the training, they said, Dear Baba, we're signing you. Just like that. Look. The, first day of trials, though. First trials. First, <laughs> I remember <laughs> in the game there on Sunday. That Monday we trained at 10. After training, half past 11. Then the coach said, no, we're signing you. Was your size not an issue for them? There. Look up there. <laughs> or you you overcame that with the the skill and quality. I think it, um, with the way I've, I've uh, understand the game, the way I was playing, it 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 gave me an edge to them to say he's he's a good thinker, he's quick in action, he's a good reader in the game. He can you know out of nothing he can create something you know, and I think. That was, uh, I would say, one of the key things that made me to, uh, I mean, also for the, for them to sign me. Because I remember also when, we, you know, okay, after I've signed there, then I've, I've part of the team. Uh, when, when if the game is tough, the coach will say to me, hey, Benny, come. You know, come. I said, look, now go and do your thing. Uh, because they like that one, two, one, two, one, two, get to the box. One, two, then I'll, I'll be in the box. Then he will say to me, look, you see now it's tough. This guy is physically strong and you can't do anything. So now can you go in and do your thing? Okay, it's fine. Then when I go in, then I'll talk to uh, our striker then. Say, look, don't run. Just stay there. Stay there, I'll come. Then he'll stay there. Then I'll get the ball and I'll come there. Look, I, I, I enjoyed I enjoyed myself there and it was not an easy 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 uh, country to stay uh, first because it was another time like uh, it was cold. Actually it was starting to be cold because towards um December, January then the become the snow. Yeah. And yeah, I mean wow. And you joined in oh, in summer. Correct. Yeah, you went yeah, for your trials. Was, tra yeah, because your trial period was July. June, July. Yeah. yeah, July. And yeah, that's when I started in July. And it was August, September, October. Then November, December. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure you were lonely, but um, wasn't, I think Nomvete was also there, but yeah, he was with his family, there. right? Oh, yeah. No, when I got there, then I find uh, Nomvete was there. And mm -hmm. yeah. And the cool thing was that we knew each other, I mean, from when we played Derby. Yeah. And it was easy for me. And yeah, we, we, had a, we had a nice, nice journey. Um, you know, you had, I mean, this was big for South African football for a player from London Pirates to eventually find themselves playing in Denmark and yeah. making obviously a lot of money. And with that, sometimes I find that the universe will try to teach you some type of lesson. And this one is probably the most messed up of all of them. Because, you know, soon after you signed with in Denmark for Alborg, I believe. Yeah, yes. Um, unfortunately, your archbishop, your father, yeah, then yeah. passes on. And then probably a month later or so, your brother then passes on. <laughs> and then two months later, then your sister passes on. What does that do to you? How does that affect you on the field? How does that affect you as Uzo? Yeah, you no, know, it's 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 that was tough. Uh, I will I'll never forget that time because you no, know, I just signed, and then I came back to come and get my things. I remember um, 
that I think I came back, it was Thursday, and then uh, I need to fly back on Sunday. Then when I was sleeping, I remember it was Saturday, early hours of the morning, and when 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 my phone rings in that in that morning, um, you know something said to me, I spare. Calling day off. Yeah, it's 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 bad. And when I saw that was my brother, and I was like, oh, hola, show him fun. Who's it? I shall be fit time. Call. I'm fit. Yeah. Okay, I'm coming. Go to go back. Go home. Yeah, try and arrange things there. And I called the team. And I told the team that, look, my father just passed away now. Uh, and I have a funeral. Then uh, uh, next week, we're going to have a funeral. Then um, after the funeral, which said, okay, no, it's fine. But please, uh, I want to beg by Monday. Because on Wednesday, we are playing in Europa. Out. So I need you there. Just imagine, I just signed. Mm. And then now I'm facing this. And here come the coach says this. I was like, okay. You find funeral. Okay, done the funeral. And then I went back. Uh, after, I'll say it was July. August, my brother passed away. Mm-hmm. For a call, yeah, Bob. It's bad. Come back. Funeral done. Go back. And then uh, the third month was my sister. I think my sister, she's that's that's where I I I, I was. Uh, she she really you know I would say she really killed me. Mm. Uh, because she was everything to me. She, after we lost my, she has to come in and be mother and, you know, yes, my father was there. You know, to have her on, 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 on my side. Yeah, it becomes tough after no, everything started to change. I'm sorry, man. Started to change, and um, I remember sitting alone, and I was like, "Why am I leaving? If I'm going to lose all the people that I think uh, are the are the people that need to to carry me." But now, uh, yes, you know, my father, my brother, it's okay. But why you? You know, out of, out of, thank you, out of all the people, but why you? You know, and she left uh, her two kids. And uh, at that time, uh, my other brothers were not working, and I was the one who was working. They were young. I remember the other one, the girl, I think she was about maybe 14, and then the boy was about 10, 11. So uh, on Sunday, I remember on Sunday, I got a call from uh, Sundowns, uh, that team. And, uh, what happens is that um, Harris Trail, um, he's, he's got a son at, in, in my street. So the mother of, of, of his son, she's, she was a friend of my sister. So I think him, a friend of my sister, she did tell Harris the situation that she, it's happening at home. And so Harris called me and said, look, I know this is a situation at home, and I think if you can come back and play for us, 
then so that you can look after your system. There's no one anyway. It's it's only you. And then I made an appointment with them that I'll come and see them on Wednesday. Okay, fine. And then when I after I spoke to him, and I called the chairman. Uh, uh, chairman, he, I've got this situation. You know, that I just lost my sister, and you know, uh, kids here, and uh, I'll love if I can come back and play for the team. Maybe ask for a loan, you know. Uh, because these kids are young and it's not going to be easier for me just to send money because I know my brothers. How mm. they are. And for me to send money, who's going to look after them and make sure that they go to school, they do the right things and all of that. And, and then I, at that time, it was also that fiasco of the bid for 2010. Mm. You know, so I've got my own issues. Chairman has got his on issues the side of the beat and yeah it, it was a mix up and uh, then he said no I'll, I'll, I'll come back to you and uh, then on Monday I took a flight I went back to Denmark I, did, uh, I didn't wait for Wednesday to go to Sundance I went to Denmark because uh, to me it was I wanted to come back to, to, to Pirates and so that I can look after my sister's kids and yeah uh, it happens that, uh, you know, I stayed there in Denmark for about two weeks and uh, nothing happened between me and parents and sundowns. Eventually, I don't know, who gave them my numbers and they called me. Yes, yes, hey, your Danish number. Yes, they called me. And the same person, here's true. Oh, boy. Uh, we, we arrange everything for you. Uh, appointment, you said you want to come and then what happened? I said, look, hey, my coach said I must come back because on Wednesday we are having a European uh, knockout, so I must come back. So I had to fly on Monday. Oh, okay. Look, give us your chairman's number when I speak to him. And I gave them. I remember it was four to eight in the morning. I have past eight. Everything was done. He called me and said, look, the power of sun everything dogs. is done. We finished with your team. Everything is done. Don't worry. Even your ticket is ready now. Uh, your things, they will follow you. You are flying tonight. You are coming back. What is? Um, you can go and see your, 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 your team there. They will tell you. And uh, when I went there to training, then when I got there, and then the coach called me and the chairman. Look, we just spoke to Sundowns now. Sundowns, they made an offer for you, and you couldn't say no. So, yes, we understand that you, you are facing this, and that's why actually we agreed because it was not going to help us to have you, but your mind is in South Africa yeah. and looking after your sister's kids. And yeah, even if we try all these other things, but it, it, we, we, we saw that. Uh, it's not going to be healthier for you to be here. So, yeah, we, we decided that, no, it's fine for, for you and your sister's kids to be together. That's what is important. So, yeah, we confirm with Sundance and then here's a ticket to go home. Really? Yes. Beautiful. That's how I came to South Africa. Yes, but there was also some controversy. And I think that also came out much later. Yeah. Because when you came back to South Africa, and please correct me if I'm wrong, oh, yes. you initially thought that you're going back home, which is Orlando Pirates. And then next thing you find yourself, not really find yourself, because Mr. Chewy played a big part, right? Yeah, yes. In getting you to Sundowns. Um, in fact, let me ask you this. What is your relationship like with Mike McCobb right now? Look, um, Mike McGabb, I respect him a lot. Um, you know, he, he's, he's, he's a father. We, in life, we all make mistakes. Um, like me, I made my mistakes. He also made his own mistakes, but I, I respect him a lot. He, he helped me to be, you know, to get that opportunity to go to Denmark. So... For me, I will always respect him. I will always respect him. So, 
um, because and once again, please yeah. correct me, yeah. but what I, when I did my research, yeah. it came across as though when you came back to South Africa, yeah. you had intentions of going to London Pirates, but he gave them this exorbitant amount that you wanted, I believe around 250,000 per month. And that's the reason why Orlando Pirates decided not to take you on. You know, I, I can, you know, when it comes to that, I, I, I'm not going to lie. I don't know. Mm. I, for me, that's a hearsay. Mm. Yeah, I, he he never said to me, I spoke to parents, I said, this is how much they must give you. No, we never had that uh, that discussion, me and him. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to uh, lie. No, no, no. We never. The only thing that we spoke about was sundowns. Sundowns, okay. this is what sundowns, the offering, you come back and play for sundowns. About parents that we all... Parents, they want to beg, and then this is how much I I, um, I said they must pay you. Now, mm. I'm not going to uh, uh, lie about that. He, he never spoke about the offer that he gave to, to parents for me. No, no. He, he never. You then joined Sundowns uh, when you come back to South Africa. And this is a stint where Sundowns weren't the force that they are yeah. currently or have been in the past years yeah of South African football and African continental football, let's be honest. Yeah. Did you see that coming for Sundowns in your time there? Did you see that this was a team that was was creating something special? Yeah. Because let's be honest, Sundowns has become something special in the past few years and they've they've really exerted dominance on the South African League. Look, we, 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 when I came back, we Sundowns had stars. They had good players. And one thing that uh, uh, at that time that didn't work was that you've got all these good players, but now they lost their culture. They lost their philosophy. They lost their way of playing. So you can have all the stars, but if you, you don't have your structure, a good structure, it's, it's, it's useless. So at that time, with all the good players that Sundowns had, but we didn't have a structure. And that's what, uh, uh, when you look at Sundowns now, when Coach Pito went to Sundowns, he just put a structure, so a way of playing. That's why you see Sundowns at the uh, It's not something new. Mm. Remember that Pito played for Sundowns. And that's something that our people in, 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 in football people, they tend to forget that there's no mistake. Or maybe you'll say Pizzo came with a new thing. Pizzo knew the philosophy, the way and the structure of Sundowns because he played there. Mm. So that's, that's where, that's what he brought back mm. to say, we are this team, the Sundowns. These are the type of players that need to play for Sundowns. Not everyone plays for Sundowns. So now, when Pizzo did that, no one gave him a chance. And, and I remember the supporters wanted to chase him, and the president said, no, wait, wait. Let's give him a chance. And after that, what, what happened? It was a hammering. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> it was a hammering. So... When you, you, if if you, like me, what I always do is that I do my research with teams. So when I saw Piso, the way he's playing and how he does his things, then I check the old videos of Sundowns. Look, it's the same thing. That's why they were called Shushine and Piano. It's what they're doing now. Mm. So it, it says, when you lost your culture, it's like you're losing yourself. But when you bring your culture, you bring yourself to the game. So mm-hmm. you attribute the non-technical football elements necessarily in terms of characteristics of the individual players at the time is what Pizzo brought back in. It was no, a, a culture thing. It wasn't necessarily football the, qualities yeah. in the players, but it was also looking at the other attributes, the personal attributes of the players that he wanted to bring into the club? Yes, because it's, it's, it's very important. Uh, I'll, I'll make this example that you, 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 you'll get it now. There's only one team in this world 
that can put stars together and win. Real no other team. That's the Real Madrid. Mm. There's no other. We, before I was born and after I was born, till today, there's no other team except the Real Madrid. That's it, the only team that can bring the stars and win. Just Galacticos, just football qualities, that's, that's all. That's the only team in this world. And then that, that means that's their culture. It mm. works for them. Does it mean when Real Madrid does this, it can happen to Barcelona? So at Barcelona, they believe in that tiki tac and they believe in the process. Philosophy all the way. Look, they, they always say trust the process. It's, it's you, you cannot, uh, 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 you can't say, I'll, I'll, I'll come with four or five players to Barcelona and expect to win. You'll never win. Mm -hmm. You'll never win. But when you, you develop those players, you bring them to the senior team. Look at them now. I was checking that team. The average age of that team is 27. Most of these players are coming from where? Develop. Mm. So it means each and every team, they've got their philosophy. They've got their structure. They've got their own way. But now, uh, if... That's why Sundowns, they came back now and beat the Sundowns they are. It's not a new thing. They've been like this from the way back uh, uh, when Zola Mahobe was there, Ian and Shushine. Mm -hmm. When uh, the, the teacher's families, Natasha, when they were owning the team, they were playing this type of football. Then the reason why Mutsipe bought the team is because of that type of football. Remember, the president, Mutsipe, mm -hmm. is his... his um, well, I'll try and put it nice. He's a Barcelona fan. He likes that type of football. Okay. So that's why you see Sundowns, they're playing this type of football. So it's not, it's not something new. Uh, Muzipe, new Sundowns, I love this type of football. And now this is what I want. So as they are now dominating our league, it's not a mistake. They went back to their culture. Work to back, went back to their philosophy, and their philosophy is working. Same applies to now. Paris, they need to go back. Mm. They are back. Paris is a team of transition. They will speed, skillful players. Uh, they just need to balance. And uh, I tried to, to to convince them. I hope maybe they will do it. Maybe by January. Mm. Uh, they need. Two quick wingers. We can't have Mufukeng alone. Mm. I think they must get this boy a police. I like him a lot. Mm. The boy is playing for Polokan City. He's doing very well. So that's how Paris play. Way back, before us playing, he used to have Abu Nsunda, Helmen Mkelele, Chento Kampala. With that speed, you know, midfielders here, for the lady, for the Makanya, Innocent Mnwango, John Mwiti, April Nkwane. It's a one. So it, 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 that's that's pirates, you know. So now they are still the team with that speed, but you know, we 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 like we we're using the left side to go quick, but on the right side, we are not good enough. So we just need to balance, and that's the speed. Same applies to Chiefs. Chiefs, uh, they used to say uh, um, they call their players about Mama's boy. Something like that. Mm. Because they were like cute. Yeah, soft. Oh, my cat. Yes. Nice. Soft. Cheese boys. Yeah, cheese boys. Yes. Yeah. So they used to play good football, you know, entertaining football, dribbling and all of that. That's the Chiefs. So you cannot have that at Sundowns. You cannot have that at Parents. It's that's Chiefs. a football for Chiefs. That's why they had Dr. Kumalo, they had double A's, say, they had double A, Tinis Latham. The the late Karan Gomez, we can name it, the late Havan, Libisi, Frank Maku. That's, that's football for Kesa Chiefs. So mm -hmm. you cannot take that football and bring it to Sundowns or bring it to, to Pirates. So these are the things that uh, in these teams, they need to sit down and look back and say, are we heading the right direction? In our league, I'll make an example like Chiefs. Can't we get a player like Iskuse? Can you develop a player like Abu Chabu Pule? 
Dr. Kumano, the little one. We do have those type of players. But now the problem is that do we have coaches that they believe in this type of football? That's where. With that being said, so do you think that Pirates imminently will be able to end Sundown's dominance? Look, they, they need to work. They do, have, they do have players. And they've shown by beating uh, Sundowns in the, in, in the cup final uh, that they do have players. They can do it. They just need to believe in themselves and, and work more hard. You know, it's not easy. Uh, I always say Sundowns, they're up there. And these teams, they are here. They need to go up to they, Sundowns. They're sundowns playing catch come up. down. Mm. They need to go up there to the Sundowns. How? By performing in the league. You know, I'm happy. I'm happy that the Pirates, they're going to play Champions League. That's where they, now they're getting there mm-hmm. to, 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 to Sundowns. That's how you can, you, you can make Sundowns. If you can't play the Champions League, how can you make Sundowns? Mm. So, Pirates, they do have players. I, 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 I believe they do have quality players that really they can challenge Sundowns. My worry is their mental strength in terms of uh, not, uh, not judging games. That, you know, play Sundowns this week, they will beat Sundowns. Next week, they play Chiefs, they will beat Chiefs. Next week, you give them Pulgan City, they play a draw or they lose. Yep. Or Chipper United. Or Chipper United. Then I'm... Um, <laughs> You it's know, frustrating. You know, that consistency. I, I, I get frustrated as if I'm, I'm, I'm playing there because, uh, you know, when, when, when we are a big show that we are a big team, when we play against a small team, hammer them. And I always say, when a man is down, kick him in football because as soon as he's going to do that, he's in trouble. Speaking of smaller teams, yeah. um, you know, obviously you had an injury at Sundowns and then you had a loan spell. Yeah. You were transferred to Black Aces. Yeah. Um, give me a good comparison, considering that you played for bigger teams, Alanda Pirates, Mamelodi Sundowns, and then going to a team as relatively small as Black Aces. What was the difference? And also, what was your experience at Black Aces? Look, um, it, was, it was a good thing for me to go. To, to go. I mean, I was injured and... Mm-hmm. Uh, so I had to to come back to the game, you know, and uh, my injury was was a very difficult one because I, the doctor said I'll be out for about three months, you know. Yeah, because I, I had a fracture, and then I twist also my ankle was like. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah, for me to go to ACs, yeah, uh, just for me to come back to the game, you know, get the game time. And also on the other side, I would say it was a blessing in disguise to learn how other small teams are, are, are doing things, you know, how they treat their players and how players they respond in terms of um, the team's uh, uh, way of doing things. And also learning from me to say, okay, in the, you know, the big teams, this is what we, 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 we do things. And... That's why you will see everyone was performing because of the things that we're doing. Because um, you just, remind, just reminded me something that when I came to Sundowns, I remember the president asked me that there in Denmark, how things were done? What, what, what's happening? And uh, what was happening? Then I had to explain to him because um, in Denmark, I remember they had to sit me down and say, look, as much as football is entertainment, it's work. Mm-hmm. You, you you come here, you are at work. Same applies like a person who will come to the office at eight and leave at four. So we train twice. You come, you must be here by quarter to eight. And then uh, 10 o'clock, uh, quarter to eight, yeah, quarter to eight. And then eight o'clock, we, we eat breakfast. Then 10 o'clock, we train, then after training, then we're going to eat uh, lunch, then we're going to train uh, half past three, then after training, and then go home. So we are here to work. And 
Now I, my mind has to change. No more, I know I'm not in football as a case is again. Now it's work. So my mind tend to change that uh, this is work. I must think serious, you know, and also the you know, dietitian, they, they check the fat and they tell you, look, your, your, your fat is okay like this. I keep it this way. This is what you need to eat. And you need to follow that because if they say your fat is okay, in after two weeks, they come back and test you again. And then they find out you've got fat. Then it's a fine. Mm? Yeah. No, it's a fine. And the other thing was that um, even when we, when we meet in the morning, quarter to eight, if, let's say, you get there by 7.46, meaning we are late with the, a minute, that's a hundred rand. Minute. hundred rand a minute. So if it's five minutes, that's 500. Ten minutes, yeah, a thousand. go on, go yeah. on, go on. So you, you, you learn to, to, to take this game serious. And uh, when it comes to the food, you know, you, there's a food, the breakfast, they tell you this is what you eat and at the kitchen because of the dietitian, uh, whatever that you're eating is from him. Direct the team to say this is what they need to eat. Is this for a plan for each player? Uh, not necessarily for because what did they, what was happening is that uh, because of the fed, the fed determine in terms of what you need to eat, but we will all will eat almost the same thing. Yeah, almost the same thing, and uh, yeah, breakfast and lunch. Uh, but others, yes, because of their body structure, yes, they don't have to eat some of the things that we're eating because of the fat issue. So they had so certain players would be given less calories, certain yes. players more calories. Yes. You need to muscle up, you need to yes. trim down, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, with different body structures. Yes, but please. overall, just basic same sort of meals. They yeah. just handed out healthy breakfasts, healthy lunch. Yeah, okay. make sure that you stay yeah. professional. You get enough nutrition to be able to. Get through your training sessions. Yes, some applies to the when we go to the gym. Uh, you no, know, I remember. Uh, no, I fault um, when we are in the gym, like trying to up the weights, and then I just collapse there. Then when I woke up, when my eyes are turning, I look around. So the coach. Doctor, our doctors and the hospital doctors and chairman. And then what's happening? They said, no, you, you just collapse the training there we're in the gym. And yeah, then, then I asked, what's happening? And they said, no, man, they run some tests with you and then they find out that you've got a heart problem. You know? Mm. Oh, okay. And then they asked me, from your side of your family, you have maybe a history of that. And I said, yes, my mother, she had a heart problem. And at some point, she had to go and up and then they put um, a... Stint. Yeah, the watch. Oh, uh, right. Yes. And yeah, and then they, that's what they said to me. Look, right now, we, we want to advise you, but it's up to you. One, you can retire in the game now based on your heart problem. Two, here are the pills. You can live with these pills. Why? No, because your condition, you're not supposed to be angry, being stressed, you know, pressure. stressed and all of that, mm -hmm. you know, and be, and be, like you need to be okay at all, all the time because if, you become stressed and being, you're fighting what your heart doesn't beat normally. And if it stops, we don't know whether if it stops, you will recover or not. We don't know. So for your safety, we decide that this is what we're thinking, but it's up to you. I said, I'm not going to leave with pills. I'll, I'll play the game, but I'll try to avoid all those things. Mm. You know, I said, the boy is in your court. Then they gave me a rest for a month. And then they allowed me to come home. And when I 
came here home. That's when Sanda, I mean, Paris, they had a fifth year anniversary. Then, yeah, I went to see the supporters at the stadium and all of that. And then I went back. Then I played, but I tried to, to avoid, like, it, or even today, like, I, I, if I see that, yeah, this guy is pushing me somewhere, then I just go away. But now, gosh, when I think about it, seeing that you're a person, you've always been calm. Um, and then would you say that your stay or your departure really at Black Aces could have added to some of the stress also much later? Because, you know, there was a bit of... Yeah. Yeah. No, you know... Uh, you, you you avoid things. Mm. You avoid, especially when you know your 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 health condition. You avoid it because I, I I didn't wanna fight. You know uh, because I know they told me if you go this way, you're on your own. So um, I tried to avoid, even though there's some other issues that you know they're still pending there. But I'm like no. Even I, now. Yeah. Wait, do they still owe you money? Yeah. Even now. Even now. And I was like, it's fine. Life goes on. You know, only God we we will deal with them. Because if if you sign me for six months, you need to pay me for six months. Simple. If you have got issues uh with me, we deal with those issues. But if now you wanna say these issues and a salary. But it's not in the contract. And yeah. So some of the things, you know, and then I was like, you know what, it, it's fine. Yeah. And I even said to my wife, you know. Yeah. Because yeah, it felt like, to, to me, um, so it felt like, you know, that situation at Black Aces, it felt more personal. And I think, you know, they took it to disciplinary, obviously. Yes. And then you took it as far as the PSLDC. Yes. And then you were found not guilty. Mm. So it came across as though they were coming at you as a person. Uh, you know, you, 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 you allow a person to come to you and listen to him, hear what he says. If you've got points, let's deal with it. If you've got facts, let's deal with it. But now, if you come to me, you then hear say, and I come to you, then evidence. I don't know. I, 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 yeah. I, you know, certain things, that's why I was like, you know what, let me, let me just leave them. Because they accuse me of coming to the, the, the camp. The hotel, the camp. yeah. And I was like, me, he said, yes, I was like, okay. Here the hotel, there's cameras from the boom gate to the corridors, to the reception, to my room. There's, there's cameras. Uh, and again, the system in, 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 in the rooms, when you put your card in, uh, when they check the room number, they will tell you this key open at what time. I, it's, 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 you know, sometimes you teach people things that they think they know and they don't know. I said, when I proved my, my innocence in the case, I said, okay, one, there's cameras. Let's go and review the cameras. Okay. Uh, there were a lot of talks. They mm -hmm. didn't want to do that. Then, okay. I said, the machine of the doors uh, in the computer, uh, there's a serial number. Because when they say, this is Vera's Vira, room. So when I open there, it, it logs to the system. So it will tell them what time that I came to, to my room. And then, obviously, I mean, the time in the cameras will say. And the funny part in all of this, the security said, when you testify, we go around and check. And when we go around and check, there was nothing. I mean, we saw he was in his room. Everyone was there. Like, uh, we didn't find him. You know, he, he went for massage. We were there. After the massage, he went to his room. And in the system, it shows that, you know, this man from here, he was there. The camera's there. I said, no, I don't want these ones. I want from the pump gate when I came in until to my room. And then let's check the key, what time did they open, what time did they close? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Eventually. Yeah, so... Someone's playing just, games. Uh, you know, in, a, in, in, in football, that's one thing that I don't like, is that don't think players are stupid. Hmm. Uh, I will never act, know that I'm stupid, is because maybe I respect you. And I don't want this of going back and forth. I, I grew up not to have an argument with an end. And when I when I see that I'm putting my story to you, here's an evidence. See, you don't want to see it, then I leave it. Yeah, that's how I I grow up. I, I I'm not gonna have an argument with you. If you want me to say sorry, it's fine. I'm sorry. No, I made a mistake by bringing this to you. I'm sorry. I'm not gonna do this. And that's all. so. I uh, uh, between me and ACs, it came to that point to say. You know what? So just leave it. Yeah. Just leave it because it's gonna be a long argument whereby no one wants to to get the videos. Whereas their own security guard said mm. this guy was there. He was yeah. in his room. He never went anywhere else. He was in his room. His roommate confirmed that he was there. Yeah. So when you say he didn't sleep in his room, he was somewhere else. Yeah. Speaking of games, I've got a little game here for you, brought to you by <laughs> Betway. It's called Bench Play Cell. Yes. Uh, brought to you by Betway, get way more. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with this one. I'm going to give you three players' names. You need to choose one as a starter, choose one that you can bring off the bench, and choose one to get rid of and send elsewhere. Sure. It's a difficult one. I'm going to warn you up front. <laughs> Lucas Radebe, Mark Fish, and Aaron McQuenna. Um, I'll release. Uh, I'll release Arun. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll 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 stay with Fish in the bench. I'll start Lucas. Okay. okay. So Lucas in the starting lineup. Yeah. Mark Fish off the bench. Yeah. Aaron McQuinn sadly has to go yeah. elsewhere. Play his trade elsewhere. Uh, yeah. Um, A second set of players. Yeah. Teko Modise. Yeah. Gift Leremi. Temba Zwane. Oh, <laughs> that is hard. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Super yeah, Sub, yeah. for these ones. You're making yeah. it tough. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, Jehovah. Yo. 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 Can't you change, please? Yeah. <laughs> <Bless. laughs> Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And Liremi, yeah, yeah. how was your relationship with Liremi? No, no, give, give you, Jesus, I can say a lot about that. Yeah. Yes, yes, I enjoy each and every moment with that boy. And, you know, I, but definitely I all start gift. Okay. Definitely okay. gift will, 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 it was, was, it was something else that boy. He was, oof. He, he, he was a star. He was a star. I think he, we lost, we lost something that uh, even today, I don't think there's, there's any player that comes closer, you know, with, with everything, the thinking, the body, everything. And oh, now here comes another one. Oh. Mm, Tyrese. So you uh, you stuck between Teko Modise and Temba Zwane. Oh. Uh, Sadly, you have to let someone go. I want this to go, but who can I let? Because in my team, I will always have all of them. I can't. Yo. Oh. I mean, Teko is one of the great talents that South Africa's ever seen. Yeah. But it, so is Mshishi. And, and, <laughs> and the That's general, okay. the general will do a job for your team. Boy, oh boy, will he do a job. You know, both of them, they, they, they can do a job. They yeah. are two very good players in different, men, in different ways. And they carry, they carry these teams, both of them. <laughs> and, uh, look. Yo. Uh, Super Sub is not happy with you on this one. I'll, uh, I'll take Tico. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Ah, Another team is very lucky to get Timber's one. Look, 
<laughs> I'll take your answer. Gift okay. starts, tickle, comes in off the bench. Yeah. And Temba Zwane, sadly, yeah. I'll, I'm not going to let you say the words yourself because it's giving you pain. Oh, man. Oh, <laughs> My last one. Phil Masinga, Mark Williams, and Sean Bartlett. Uh, Mark Williams short battle. Uh, uh. yes, you know, in this case, uh, it's not that difficult, but it is difficult. The reason why it's not that difficult is because these two, uh, 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 the late Masinga and uh, Mark Williams, it's because of the Afcon. Mm. He scored a goal. Mm -hmm. Masinga scored. The goal that took us to the World Cup. Uh, Mark Williams scored the winning mm -hmm. goal for mm -hmm. us in the 96 Afcon. Cup of Nations. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, now I've played with Sean. Man. That's another key thing again. Sean, I played with him when we, we first time beating Nigeria here at Ellis Park. And... I played with Sean a lot of games and I, I, I know Sean. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go with, 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 with Masinga. Masinga to start. He took us to to, to best ever World, World Cup. Cup. And then sub. And also on the Afcon, I think he came as a sub. I was there at the stadium, mm. Mark Williams. He came, as a, came, came on as a sub. He scored the goal. Uh, we won the the, the That's right. Yes, That's right. I, I remember he came with a sub, uh, and then yeah, Mark Williams will be in the bench, and then um, sorry. Yeah, yeah, no. It's, a very tough uncle was Sean Bartlett. Yeah, you no, know, it's 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 because of now I need to I need to look at the contribution that they they, they already did in the game, and yeah. you know him. Uh, the late Masinga took us to may he saw us in peace. He took us to the first world first ever World Cup. Then Mark Williams came as a sub and they scored the winning goal when we beat Ghana in the AFCON final. And yeah, Sean, yeah, Sean, we, yeah, we beat Nigeria two and I was with him. But yeah, in this case, I had to go with Phil and, and, and Mark. So thank you so much, Tippy Darling. Yes, I just have one more question. Yeah. Um, Tado. Your son. Yeah. Your son plays for Richards Bay. Richards Bay, yes. Um, knowing what you know now, yeah. what would you say is the path he needs to be taking? Do you want him to stay and play locally? Or do you still believe that playing, you know, internationally should be the direction he should be focusing on? Look, uh I would say it's it's, it's going to be up to him, but uh, looking at how our football now, I, I, I would love for him to go overseas. Okay. I would love for him to go overseas because I've seen that uh, our football in terms of, um, and that's that's a challenge, and I challenge a lot of uh, coaches to say, if our coaches are hitting a roof. Glass ceiling. So how do you expect a PSL, a Patriot PSL player to go over the roof. To break through that ceiling mm -hmm. without the help, possible. without it's the help of possible. a coach. Yeah. It's, it's, it's something that I've, I've, I've seen uh, that that's what is happening in our game. And uh, they asked a lot of people, why can't we see a lot of players going overseas? It's because of our coaches, they are here under this roof. They can't go through. And how do you expect now players to go through that, that roof when our coaches, they can't? Mm -hmm. I'm happy to see what Coach Pizzo did to go in Africa. Coach what Rulani. What Rulani is doing there. What Coach uh, Fatu is doing. Mm -hmm. And Coach, uh, 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 um, he's a very close coach, uh, friend of mine. Uh, Morena Morobedi is coaching um, uh, Oh, Galax. yes, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. we, 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 yeah. yeah we very close, me and him. And when, when, when I see them doing this, then it says, now we can hit that roof. 
because there's no way. How, how am I as a coach? Teach you to play international football while I've never been in that international stage. Mm. Yeah. How possible is that? It's not possible. Well, we had uh, yeah. Bafana Bafana coach uh, allude to this, talking about how perhaps closer to your era, there were more players yes. in the Bafana Bafana squad playing their trade internationally or specifically you mentioned European football yeah. mm-hmm. um, and that there's a lack of it now today. The players perhaps not giving, he, he alluded to one or two names. I won't mention names directly, yeah. but he yeah. alluded to the idea that certain players perhaps should have been playing their trade in Europe and they've been blocked, et cetera. But I think it's a very good point and something we need to look forward to as, as South Africans from a footballing perspective is have more coaches and players playing their trade internationally. No, we, we, you know, what, what, what is important for me is to have coaches that are good. You know, when, when you look at our football, I will, I will, I'll take you back now. Let's check 96 when we won the, the AFCON. We had Lucas Khatebe, we had Mark Fish, we had uh, 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 um, the late Mark Singer playing overseas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The rest were local. And then let's look at the teams that we, those players were playing. Chiefs, Paris. Mm-hmm. And then we had top coaches, South African coaches. So that means the problem is not with players. We need to empower our coaches. Mm. If we can empower our coaches, you cannot tell me. Uh, I know some coaches <laughs> they will fight with me. You've got a, a, a D license coach mm-hmm. who's coaching a seventeen year old boy. Listen to me, guys. <laughs> a D license coach. Mm. You've got the Kef A license coach who's coaching PSL. Then you take that 17 year old boy, take him to that coach with Kef A license. Look at the gap mm. of the coaches themselves. So, do you think that boy is ready? Can't be. You know why? The knowledge that the D license coaches got and the knowledge of the A license. Too far, each other. very vast. But if you're gonna have the very same A coaches with KFA licenses coaching those players on the ground, yeah, will elevate. There's nothing new, mm. the same method all the way up. But now, that's why you'll find that our players, when they get to the PSL, they struggle a bit. And they catch up when they're around 24, 25, 26. Now that's when you started to see them. But when you see, oh, when you look them overseas, Barcelona, that was 17, 18 year old, they play. Mm-hmm. You go anywhere in Europe, you'll find these young ones are playing. But why as can't we see that? It's because of, we're saying, no, when you've got KFC, KFT, you must coach uh, 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 grassroots football. But now, that grassroots football for me, with the Kev, uh, with the D license, with the C, for me, it's, 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 it doesn't give us what we need. Because it means I still have to work as a Kev A license coach, while at the very same time I need to deliver the results. Then it, it somehow, somehow, I think we, 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 we get it wrong. There's a disconnect, wrong. yeah. We're getting it wrong. So, my thinking is that. Let's have also the K, KFA lessons, KFP lessons coaches, coaching the little ones so that you grow understanding what needs to be done. Because remember, as soon as the boy turns 15, 16, now he needs to understand why it's so important to win. Hmm. But how can you teach a 15-year-old boy to win with the D lessons? Hmm. And what's required? Because then the deal I said is about development, 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 development. You can't teach him to win. Mm. But okay. now with the KFA, you can do it all. Develop him, make him understand to say, you know, now we are in a stage where we need end product. And the end product is to put the ball in the net. 
That's what we need. I love it. So hopefully we make that progress yeah. as things go forward. Uh, thank you so much. I'm going to leave you with one final thought and ask you for your favorite football memory. Just uh, your favorite memory from your career. And how you'd like to be remembered. Look, um, uh, yeah, um, I would like to be remembered as uh, I was... I don't know. Right now, I'm an all-time top scorer, all on mm, the mm. and uh, that's one thing that um, yeah, people do, um, must always remember me on on, on that. And uh, again, um, my football memories were I will say uh, there's a game that I'll never forget, and I hope um, you know the nation and everyone. Uh, they'll find peace and and uh, and be okay in their hearts uh, when we lost for the park. Ellis Park. Yeah, that that was a night that uh, we had a very nice game, you know, attacking and I scored a, I scored an equalizing goal on that night, and we lost people. And, you know, all those people so rest in peace and. Something that every year it, it doesn't go away. Uh, but one thing that makes me sometimes be happy is that uh, you know they wanted to come and watch their favorite players. They want to come and watch their favorite teams. And they were in a peaceful place where they're happy. You know, so the you know, elders they always say that a person who died in his space. You cannot complain or ask for more. You know, you just have to celebrate the life of of, of that person. So, uh, must always celebrate the lives of those people because uh, you know their soul were there, um, taken away from the, in the place where they love and they had fun most of the time. So, Vilakazi, thank you so much for that. And uh, I want to especially thank you for being so vulnerable with us here today and sharing the personal insights of a football player behind the ball, be off the pitch. I think it's uh, one of the beautiful things that we don't get to experience all the time as football fans. We, we see the game on the pitch. So thank you so much for that insight. We really appreciate it. No, uh, guys, thank you very much. And yeah, we, we, we keep pushing because if you don't push... Yeah, who's gonna push you and exactly? Yeah, I will um, I'll say thank to you guys. And I'm just here, you can see the way I'm wearing. I'm, I'm from work, you look so nice. <laughs> no, thank you. I'm from work, so I'm working for this company, Kazil Industries, where we manufacture building materials, nice and supply hardware, construction companies with the building materials, and also. It is TV. That's where my family and my kids they get everything to go to school and yeah. It is TV. It's 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 part of my life and yeah. Ah, I love it. It is TV. The first time I met you, yeah. so it was probably 2021 yeah. when it is TV started, yeah. and I was so starstruck. And I remember I used to work with Ngulego at the yeah. time, yes. and I asked him, Ngulego, can I please just take a picture? I still have that picture. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Wow. Oh, Man, oh, anyway. Thank you. thank you so much. Thank mm. you, Tippy Worldwide. Thank you, darling. And above all else, thank you so much to you, the ballers. Join us every Tuesday night live here on the podcast and chill YouTube channel uh, from 9 p.m. as we break down the week's football brought to you by Betway. Remember, don't be offside, be, be onside, onside with us <laughs> and Betway. Betway. Once again, thank you so much, Tor Vilekazi. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you Beautiful. Guys.